Simon Ross from Cultaholic.com. Uh, FYI, I'm not sick. Uh, I threw my voice out you yesterday. You can spit in my mouth if you want to, Tom. I'll take it. I would have done that anyway. <laughs> that was scary. Yeah. You did that with your eyes. I was recording commentary last night and I've completely thrown my voice. I'm surprised it happened more often. Happened more often. It's early in the morning. Jesus Christ. <laughs> And let's do some news. The first ever women's match in Saudi Arabia has been announced by the WWE. We have an update on the Jordan Miles WWE situation and some potential spoilers for WWE Crown Jewel, which we'll get to a little later on. Breaking news from the WWE this morning. A groundbreaking event is going to take place in Saudi Arabia tomorrow. There is Ross falling with the groundbreaking. The, the, we're falling towards the Earth's core. The ground is shattered beneath our feet. Yes, Lacey Evans versus Natalia is taking place tomorrow night live at Crown Jewel. The first ever women's match being held in Saudi Arabia. This, 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 is, this is a big thing. This it's is, a huge thing. It's, they tried this last time, didn't they? Was it last year or was it last? It was last spring. It's Super last Showdown. Spring. We had obviously Renee Young fly out there to do the commentary, but also uh, on that plane was Natalia and Alexa Bliss. They were going to have, well, WWE wanted them to have a matchup, but the Saudi government didn't approve it. So we've come a long way in just over a year. It's about bloody time, to be honest, lads. You should have pulled your finger out a long time ago. <laughs> it's 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 one of those, and um, and so we were talking about it in the office earlier, and they said, well, if this was this is such a big deal, why did they wait until now, the day before, to announce it? I can imagine with like last time that like, they they didn't announce it, they were flown out, and it turned out that the the whole the government thing changed their minds because I happened. I remember seeing it because Natalia and Alexa were posting all these things on Instagram, going, look at us, we're going to Saudi Arabia. And obviously the word got out and then it, it spiralled into the, the proposed matchup going to be happening, is it not going to happen? And then it turned out not happening. And for this progressive relationship that WWE and Saudi Arabia are promoting together, that was not a good look for that promo uh, the progressive thing. But then but then they never announced the match officially no. anyway. So I think it was it's probably if you if you're gonna sort of play sort of PR PR juggling, like it's e it's better to not announce the match than to announce the match and then bin it off completely. So the fact they've announced it now, this is this is a thing, this is happening. Yeah. This is just, it's, it's, it's an exciting progressive thing. And, and I've seen a few people already going, oh, oh, this is great and all, but Natalia and Lacey, really? Oh, that's not the bigger, <laughs> it's the bigger picture here, man, lads. That's that. And glasses, and everyone. And everyone involved. <laughs> well, that's it. And, and also, okay, so they teamed together on Raw the other week. That was a bit peculiar. But overall, like, this has been one of the more, this has been one of the longest standing feuds on WWE lately. Believe it or not. <laughs> for better or for worse. There, there, is, there is a rivalry here. So that this, there's a reason for this match to be happening in this way. And also, just to put a bit of hack theory out there, people might have turned it down. These might be the new two that said yes. That's the founding on nothing other than speculation and conjecture, but that's what I do best. <laughs> hack theory. <laughs> uh, more on this as we get it, and of course we'll be watching it tomorrow as well, which we'll talk about a bit later on. But there we go, the first ever women's match in Saudi Arabia. It's Natalia and Lacey Evans. So Jordan Miles has been very much in the news over the last 48 hours. Uh, the big t-shirt story that has uh, rumbled across the internet. And uh, you can watch the previous videos uh, that we've done here at Cultaholic to get an idea of the story there. We don't want to go into it again because we'll be here for a long time. Jordan Miles put out uh, a statement on Instagram yesterday uh, talking about the whole thing because this sort of follows on from Jordan Miles really speaking out very loudly about WWE's uh, alleged treatment of black people and, and further out into the industry as well. Jordan Miles has said on Instagram, I offended a ton of people and used anger to fuel me. The anger I have inside of me has been built up for years now. Call me what you want, but you'll never be able to call me fake. My ribs are touching, I'm tired of waiting. It's time to snatch plates from those that have been eating for too long and always get seconds, whilst guys like myself have to eat crumbs from the floor like an unwanted child. Uh, this, I'm paraphrasing this because this is a very long Instagram Instagram post that you can go and read for yourself, it's public. Uh, today I shall rise up from the past like a dark phoenix and promote change in this industry. I will be the best in the world, I am the best in the world, and no man or woman will stop me from being honest. Go the distance. Some passionate words from Jordan Miles after what has been quite a tumultuous week for Jordan. Yeah, I've got enough for speaking out because as that old saying goes, if things don't change, nothing changes. Is that how it goes? Something along those lines. Well, the one thing he does say a couple of times is like, I'm not apologising for what I said. Yeah, just like, how? I stand by what I said. I just realised it was all 
you know, quite offensive at times as well. And and it's this the, the opinion that, that runs through this, and I've said this to Jack, and I've said this to Adam, and, and now I can sort of say this with you here as well, with regards to the T-shirt, like re regardless of the connotations of it and such like that, it's a crap T-shirt. It is a crap t-shirt. That's t -shirt. the big issue here, from like among others, it's a crap t-shirt. It is a crap t-shirt. One of 30 very rushed NXT t-shirts that were pushed out, and yeah. it's, it's crap. <laughs> like, Ross's merch is much better. <laughs> Just say it. Pull the holic shop, it's on the internet. Go and have a look. <laughs> it's on the internet. How and, have we got here? <laughs> and in other places. <laughs> AE dub full gear is round the corner. There it is in semaphore in case you're landing a plane. And they put out a statement <laughs> regarding uh, the main event, uh, which Ross Twiddell has in front of him right now. I can read. AEW today announced a new tier tiebreaker. <laughs> I can't read at all. Stipulation for its World Championship title match featuring def defending champion Chris Jericho taking on the American Nightmare Cody at full gear November the 9th. That's a Saturday. In the event that there is no winner at the end of the 60 minute time limit, a panel of three esteemed judges who will be seated at ringside must vote for a winner. That is exciting. That is like real sports. It is, isn't it? <laughs> I love the wrinkle to that. Like that's a new kind of wrinkle to a title match like this. And it's not going to suggest that it's going to go the hour, but the event that it does, you've got a few people on the on the periphery. Now my, my immediate thought is, why are they bringing this in just for this match? Why wasn't this the standard from the get-go? Oh, I, I guess it just takes up too much room to have three more people sat there for the entire time. Why no. if they, why if they need a wee? <laughs> You know? Just go in the bottle. <laughs> just go in the bottle. Just go in a bottle like Shivani does. I don't know if he does. He probably doesn't. Tony does a lot of things under that desk, I reckon. <laughs> mind you, <laughs> that's, that's, that's controversial. <laughs> um, mind you, I was listening to, um, to Grilling JR, and he talked about how him and Tony, as soon as the taping is done, the first thing they do is race to find the nearest. I mean, when you're a man of that vintage, I guess it is ten times as hard as us just sat here for three hours on the street. <laughs> it truly is. It but also, is. just to follow on, in the event that there is not a unanimous choice the majority decision will be the winner. Oh, okay, so therefore, if, if not all three judges decide on who it is, they'll two go... On. Two, two on, two on. Two out of three ain't bad, as Meatloaf said. Big question, though, who are the judges? Well, because I saw four. people on the Reddit machine, which is always the best source of information outside of Wikipedia, saying that at StarCast we have the likes of Sting, former champion from that side of the, the tracks, if you will, if AEW is the child of... WCW, which was the child of the NWA. Uh, Lex Luger as well. I've got no idea who else is there, but there must be one other former okay. champion there. Oh, there's no... Honestly, the, the StarCast lineup is is massive. So, like, you've got Ricky Steamboat there. He could be Steamboat's a good one. The Rock and Roll Express are going to be there. Jim Crockett is going to be there for Jim Crockett Promotions, making a very rare real-life appearance. Jim Crockett could very well be there. Robocop is going to be there. I am not even kidding. Actual Robocop is going to be there. Please put Robocop on the panel. Don't do that. Please. Why would you I even wanna, bother I wanna, speculating that? I want to see Robocop on the panel for the AEW match. John! John, can you Photoshop Robocop on the panel for the AEW Championship match? Photoshop John Eiley. If you shout what are you want him to Photoshop. Photoshop John Eiley. Photoshop John Eiley. If you shout what he wants. Honestly, it will, it's his full name. Real name and everything. <laughs> I want to see Robocop there. I want to see... Well, Van Hammer we know is there as oh, well. Oh, all the big names. Bischoff is there. Whoa. Is Bischoff there? Bischoff's that there. That was quick, wasn't it? Bloody hell. <laughs> it was almost like he planned it. The Ding Dongs are Let's there. Let's just say Craig Revel Hallwood. Oh Put him on the God. panel. Len Goodman. Seven. Get all the good ones there. <laughs> Simon Cowell on the end. Let's have a great time. Let's get Alicia Dixon amongst it. Come on, Dixon. <laughs> Give us a score. And lastly, uh, some more Crown Jewel news for you. Um, by the way, everybody's over there right now. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Because we're talking spoilers. So while these things are on the table, <laughs> you've got the spoiler head. And I got the spoiler hat. There we go. We've got our gimmicks. Production values are off the scale here at Cultaholic. This is what happens when two guys who specialise in gimmicks get together to give you news. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> if you look at this and then you're upset about spoilers, you're maroon. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so they've landed in Saudi Arabia. Now, incidentally, Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair had to, uh, they had all sorts of flight problems. They had to land in Iceland because like, the wheels and the brakes of the plane were catching fire. The wheels are coming off at WWE. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> they got a lift to Saudi Arabia uh, from Brock Lesnar. And he didn't put money back. <laughs> 
just, he just runs across the ocean <laughs> like Hasselhoff in the SpongeBob movie. <laughs> no, he, they just, I think I am assuming that Brock just pulled up in his private plane and went, "All right, lads, up in, <laughs> lads on tour, Secret Magic Men, staying up till five a.m." That's a, that is the greatest reboot of Planes, Trains. They should have filmed that for Ride Along on the network. <laughs> oh my God! Why didn't they fly along? <laughs> Lesnar, Hogan, and Flair just being absolute lads. Um, but. Uh, on the show itself, now everybody is safely ensconced in Saudi Arabia. Uh, there, we've got some spoilers potentially for the match, hence the spoiler attire. Uh, from Fightful, this is as of early this week, the plan was for the Viking Raiders to win the tag gauntlet at Crown Jewel. I predicted that. You did. I think we all did, didn't we? In that yes, that hot mess of a reactions <laughs> video, predictions video that we did. Uh, this is all in order to stack accolades for them. We haven't heard any updates on the plans for the match since then. And this they, is them just loading up. They obviously Raiders. don't come any bigger in terms of accolades than the WWE Tag Team World Cup. Exactly. I mean, like everybody who gets into the business competes to become the champions of the World That'll Cup be the, Tag the, Team. The promo package for next year's WrestleMania, Seth Rollins. When I was a kid, I dreamed of being a World <laughs> Cup winner. <laughs> That's exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> so yeah, I think Viking Raiders is the good money yeah. anyway. To be perfectly fair, like they have every other team there. They just seem like they. I want to see them just sort of trounce through everybody. And they, that's the thing; they haven't lost yet. So why would they lose this tag? I hope they don't do another what they did on Raw in that gauntlet match a few weeks ago, when the uh, the Good Brothers and the Viking Raiders just sort of brawled and then got double DQ'd, and it was all a bit of a. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's exactly what Meltzer <laughs> said. <laughs> Meltzer, as they pulled out his plug and he deflated. <laughs> uh, live reactions to Crown Jewel. Oh, is that it? With everybody. Is that it? That's it. Is that all the spoilers? That's all the Let's spoilers. Let's put the spoiler head. Spo Goodbye, darling. Spoilers done and dusted. Roman, Way Roman Reigns wins the IC belt. No, I'm joking. I made that one up. Um, yeah, live reactions to Crown Jewel tomorrow on the Cult Art YouTube channel. It'll be all of us. And, all five, yeah. <laughs> and we saw what happened last time all five of us tried to film anything at the same time. Uh, it's going to be a hot And most, in, most importantly, all proceeds from that stream, so the Super Chats and all that malarkey goes to Amnesty International. So we're doing some good from this bad situation. It's going to go to lovely causes, and you are lovely for watching this. Love you, bye. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section down below. You can support us on Patreon by going to patreon.com forward slash cultaholic. Lastly, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us.